Good morning. It's great to have your company this Wednesday, the 8th day of September. My name's Jessica Ramirez, Senior Market Analyst with Bell Direct. Apologies for the lateness of this morning, Bell, but there's lots to get through. Well, commodities sour. Travel and tourism stocks to get a kick as vaccine passports will be rolling out and the Aussie economy to recover by the second half of next year. That's according to the RBA. But now let's go to overseas markets. Well, on Wall Street, US stocks started their holiday shortened week pretty much in the red. The Dow Jones down 0.8, the S&P 500 down 0.3 of a percent, while the Nasdaq went the other way, rising ever so slightly up 0.1 of a percent, hitting a fresh record high for the fourth day in a row. Now, what to watch today locally? Well, firstly, the futures are suggesting the Aussie market will get off to a bit of a red start. The futures are suggesting a fall of 0.4 of a percent. However, in breaking news, we're expecting patches of green as Australia's economic recovery looks like it's going to be supported. Vaccine passports will be rolled out from next month to help Australians prove their vaccination status overseas. On their return, Aussies can home quarantine. So this is going to help Australia's economic recovery. In light of that, keep an eye on travel and tourism stocks today like QAN, FLT and WEB. Keep in mind, so far this week, some travel and tourism stocks are up the most, although the market is pretty much trading flat for the second straight day. Flight Centre is one of the best performers. FLT up 7% this week. In other stock moves, a tech company, TNE, which we'll cover later, that's also one of the best performers, up over 7%. Chalice Mining, CHN, also up an outstanding 8% so far this week. Now, what to watch today as well? Commodities. Well, commodities have soured because there's been a lot of moves in the FX screens. The aluminium price has eased from its decade high. The iron ore price has fallen 4%, but the technical indicators are suggesting iron ore is now looking like it's been oversold. We're not really sure of when we are going to see the bottom for iron ore, but if you look at the technicals and the fundamentals, they're suggesting that we could see the iron ore price bottom soon, but stay tuned. Meanwhile, the copper price has fallen over 1% and the oil price has hit a two-week low, $68.40. Why? Well, Saudi Aramco has slashed its selling price for oil by a dollar on the back of new lockdowns across Asia. The third area to focus today, ex-dividends, which often see stocks fall. So what companies are going ex-div today? Well, ADH, it is, Medibank Private, MPL and Seek, SEK. As with most traded stocks at Bell Direct yesterday, Mineral Resources, MIN, was one. Yesterday on the ASX, MIN, their shares fell 4%. They didn't make any official company announcements, but they did announce that they sold their major holding in the lithium stock, Pilbara Minerals, PLS. Now, MIN has already got major mining operations in lithium and iron ore. This week, Bell Potter came out recommending to buy mineral resources, MIN, saying to buy mineral resources under $54.70. And indeed, MIN is there. Now, so why does Bell Potter like MIN? Well, they're expecting earnings per share growth of 12% in 2022 before a decline the year after. And Bell Potter is also expecting a dividend yield of 6 What else to watch today? Well, the RBA governor will give a speech following yesterday's announcement where they kept official interest rates on hold at 0.1 of a percent. But the big news item was that corporate effective interest rates will be kept lower for longer. The RBA extended its bond buying program. We know the RBA has been buying $4 billion of bonds per week, and it was going to end that bond buying program in November this year. Now it's extended that to mid-February next year. That means tech stocks will become a little bit more attractive, and so far this quarter, tech stocks dropped the most, 10%. What else? Well, the RBA reckons that the Australian economy will pretty much fully recover by the second half of next year and catch up on most of the lockdown losses. Now, trading ideas that could be worth a look. Here's one, Technology One, TNE, upgraded as a buy stock from a high hold by Bell Potter with a 28% increase in their price target to $12.50. That implies almost 20% share price growth in a year. So what's new for TNE? Well, 
Technology One put on its website that it's really focusing on the shift towards being a software as a service provider. Bill Potter thinks the market will start to wake up to this and compare TNE to other SaaS providers like WiseTech and Zero, and just look at what's happening with their share prices. Um, also, for those that don't know, about 73% of Australian and New Zealand residents live in councils that are powered by Technology One. Also, one in four public sector organisations across Australia and New Zealand use TNE. So they've already got a huge footprint. TNE, for those that don't know, they're due to report their full year results in November and their share price generally rallies ahead of their results. So this is a stock worth watching. Also, if you like looking at technical indicators to back up your decision making, TNE shares are in an uptrend. They look like they could move higher over the next weeks and month. However, uh, the stock um, looks like it could be oversold in the short term. This is indicated by the RSI that it's been overbought. All in one, Bill Potter suggests TNE as a buyer with a 12 month view. And lastly, bullish charting signals have been seen in Chalice Mining, CHN, Jervis Global. J-R-V, and Alexa Energy, E-X-R. That's according to Trading Central. I'm Jessica Ramirez with Bell Direct. Thanks for your company and patience. Have a great day.